This episode brought to you by Audible. The most inspiring minds, the most compelling stories, the best place to listen. Previously on X Month. John Snow, Lord Commander Mormont has requested you. This costs me my family. When you have children, you always have family. The boss of his family is on trial for his life. Stranded on an island. No one's coming for us. I have the tape you've been looking for. Really? I'm Negan. I want you to work for me. I am looking for a boy who has stolen something from me. You see something wrong with that? You just got to shoot the life out of it. So, what's next? Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. And welcome back to X-Month. Yeah, they get the idea. Well, with the first X-Men movie being a surprise hit, Fox wasted no time getting a sequel in the works and giving it a much bigger budget. This resulted in X2, X-Men United. The stupidest name movie in the franchise. Yeah, men was too hard for the kids to say, so we'll just put it under the title and make it look like a really cool math problem. Regardless, X-Men 2, X-Men United, because the X stands for X-Men, you're using the title twice as stupid, was a big hit with critics and audiences. It was a smash at the box office, and for years, people would say this was the best X-Men movie. Because if eh equals wow, then okay equals But once again, I have to ask, is it worthy of the praise? With how far comic book movies have come, did this add to moving them forward or slow down progress at a time when we just couldn't see it? Well, let's prepare by once again fetishizing the color blue. Seriously, mutants are no other color? Let's take a look at X2, X-Men United. I mean, would you call it T2 Terminator's back? The TRA stands for Terminator. It doesn't add up. The film opens once again with Patrick Stewart talking about mutation, as well as this little sneak peek at <sighs> future botched storylines. We get to the White House where a suspicious figure appears to have appeared. Excuse me, sir. Are you lost? Mr. Assange, you know you're not allowed back here again. <laughs> this is a mutant named Nightcrawler, played by Alan Cumming, giving us, let's be honest, the best part of the movie. The scene kicks us! Won't be surpassed! The quick bone Assange to a blue fox is surprisingly that good heart! He seemingly tries to kill the president, but is stopped at the last minute. And after that fast-paced scene with awesome effects and a great makeup job, let's cut to a slow-as-shit scene with bad green screening and poorly glued Elvis sideburns. This is Wolverine, played once again by Hugh Jackman, exploring an abandoned lab at a dam where he was given his animantium skeleton. And detect a bag of exploding flour on the way out. Come on. Pay attention. Meanwhile, at a museum, we see Xavier's students on a field trip led by Cyclops, played again by James Marsden, and Jean, played again by Fam K. Jansen. And I do hope you enjoy clips of her looking lost and confused, because that's all the character development you're gonna get out of her in this flick. <laughs> a shame, she has so much of an identity in the last film, such as... Wolverine liked her. She seems unable to control her powers and feels impending doom on the horizon. I keep feeling something terrible is about to happen. Hey, psychics really can predict the future. Something's happening in the food court. Meanwhile, Rogue, played again by Anna Paquin, hangs with Bobby, Pyro, and Jack Black's thrust face. Hey! Yeah, get used to these obnoxiously warped Brian Singer close-ups. This is kind of when he decided that's his style now. He uses it so much, everybody looks like that creepy Humpty Dumpty from that Kinder commercial. Yeah, bo shaky. Pyro uses his powers inappropriately when... Oh no, somewhere Zach Morris just said time out. I didn't do this. I did. Actually, this is the work of Xavier, played again by Patrick Stewart, who mentally freezes everybody, which is a power that several times in these movies would have saved the day. But when he says hypocritical stuff like, The next time you feel like showing off, don't. While showing off, just wiping a few memories would have been fine. He can't be surprised they don't really do logical things in this movie like hire a gardener. Somehow I thought you were here to talk about school reform. Meanwhile at the White House, Brian Cox talks with the President and Senator Kelly, who is still mystique in disguise. Senator Kelly, this is Colonel William Stryker. Stryker! Stryker! 
He brings up that Xavier School is a training ground for mutants that could possibly be planning an attack. Now where would they get an idea like that? The hell is that? A jet that comes up out of the basketball court. You'll notice the outlines of several flattened children around it. You enter, you detain, you question, but... The last thing we need to see is the body of a mutant kid on the 6 o'clock news. Again, their basketball court seems perfectly capable of that. Mr. Stryker, do you really want to turn this into some kind of war? I was piloting black ops missions in the jungles of North Vietnam where you were sucking on your mama's tit at Woodstock, Kelly. You're literally both the exact same age! But you show that youngster hippie! Meanwhile, Wolverine returns, but Bobby isn't so happy to see him because Rogue is so happy to see him. Oh, this is Bobby. I'm He's my... Call me Iceman. Okay, I'm Maverick. Which one of us is Goose? He tells Xavier he didn't find shit at the lab, but Xavier doesn't care because he just found someone to watch the kids while they completely abandon them again. You will be kind enough to watch over the children tonight. Once again, the four people who look after this gigantic place will be out. We can afford a military plane, but babysitters? Mm. Jean, accompanied by Storm, played again by Halle Berry. Thank God, accentless this time. Has brown hair? Oh. Track down the German-based Nightcrawler in, where else? Boston. Can't see house. Ah, all those abandoned churches in Boston with people that speak English but speak German because it shows they're German. <laughs> they force him to come down as he reveals that he had little control over his attack. I could see it all happening, but I couldn't stop myself. It was like a bad dream. Perhaps he is testing me. He talks like this every time someone brings up Son of the Mask. Meanwhile, Xavier and Cyclops visit Magneto, played again by Ian McKellen. I'll take him from here. All right, Scott. Oh, if only he could read his mind to know that this was a trap! Yeah, nobody's powers make sense in these. Eric, what have you done? I'm sorry, Charles. I farted. Face my broccoli and bean burrito of Nostrally Doom! You should have killed me when you had the chance! Ah, uh, I'll get you next time! Uh, we'll meet again! Uh, you and I are not so different! I got a million of these. X-Men, everybody! Reflexes like a cat. If it was Garfield. Dead. By the way, it'll be almost an hour before you see him again in the movie. I know X-Men fans hate Cyclops, but when X-Men itself hates Cyclops? I think there's a problem somewhere. So it turns out this giant school slash military base slash one-man guarded establishment doesn't have a security system! You want these children... To die. As soldiers break in, tranquilizing them, forcing Wolverine and others to fight back. <laughs> yeah, remember what Xavier said at the end of the last movie when asked what he'll do if somebody tries to break in? I feel a great swell of pity for the poor soul who comes to that school looking for trouble. Glad to see he was totally prepared for that! No alarm system, no security, leaving the school completely abandoned except for one person looking after him. Xavier's School for the Gifted where children come first and go first. Non-Russian Colossus finds a secret way out. Yeah, there's secret passages, but no alarm! Facebook has better security than you. As Rogue decides to separate from the group because... She's Rogue! What would she know about fighting back? Who could it be?! It's nice we finally see Wolverine digging into bad guys instead of chopping walls and fences and ho 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 middle finger! But all of that stops when he recognizes a familiar voice. Wolverine? How long has it been? I didn't realize Xavier was taken in animals. Even animals as unique as you. Every line he has sounds like the narration from Big Fish. I didn't realize Xavier was taken in animals. All the same, I prefer to keep my bones unbroken. Bobby puts an ice ring between them, and Wolverine leads them to the garage where he starts a car with his claw. Oh, yeah. Cause that's totally something he can do now. How the flaming shit does that work exactly? Well, let's see here, uh... There we go! I don't like uncomfortable silences. <laughs> Let it be known that X-Men hates in sync. Meanwhile, in a bar, we see a cameo that'll age great as Mystique, played again by Rebecca Romaine, tries to flirt with one of Magneto's guards. Bottoms up. I certainly hope so. Now it's a singer film. 
She injects him with iron while we see Stryker hold Xavier captive while controlling other mutants with a brain-altering drug. Naturally, this is injected into the brain by dropping a small amount of liquid behind the neck. Yeah, that's... sure. It turns out Stryker's child is a powerful psychopath that he tortured until he gained back control. So this is all secretly a sequel for Brian Cox's ring character? My son is dead. Just like the rest of you. So, um... How about this place not having a ramp? It's kind of bullshit, is it? Okay, small talk over. Bobby invites everyone to his parents' house where they try to gain their senses and figure out what to do next. These are my grandmothers. I dug her up myself. Thanks. It looks like the Gar Mystique injected carries the iron in his blood for Magneto to use as a weapon. I really don't think that's how iron in the bloodstream works, but who cares, it leads to a pretty badass scene. Code Red. Marbles. We have marbles. This, on the other hand, looks a little silly. I just don't see riding a Roomba as especially threatening. I just want to play this sound effect over it. If Marvin the Martian flew in, this would be the greatest Marvel crossover ever. Meanwhile, Bobby's parents come home and discover for the first time that he's a mutant. Bobby, have you tried not being a mutant? There's a cable news channel I'm pretty sure says you can do that. Speaking of which, Iceman's brother named... Arnold, I need a nice pun. Frosty! Thank you, calls the police on them. All right, the rest of you, on the ground, now. I think you'll be fine. Pyro attacks them as Gene and Storm remind everybody they're in this movie as Wolverine gets up You mean he didn't die?! WHAT?! And Iceman leaves his family. Um, sad, I guess. I mean, we didn't get to know them well for their two minutes on screen and the brother tried to have him killed. Even the mother's expression is out of focus, it matters so little. And she had the most lines. But, um, this is what it's all about. Seriously, you can move her a little to the left. About. It's alright. You can come out. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. So Stryker's son controls Xavier's mind to make him control their version of Cerebro to kill all the mutants in the world. There, that took, what, five seconds to explain? But the movie constantly cuts back to this slow-moving scene where the son is convincing him he's a lost girl. Xavier's back at the mansion, and he has to take her to Cerebro. And it drags on, and on, and on! Every time it cuts back to them, it brings everything to a screeching, monotonous halt. And the funny thing is, the illusion's not even needed! As soon as he's in there, the girl instructs him to kill all the mutants, which he attempts to do. Find them all. Each one. All of them. Good. Kill them. Well, clearly he would never do that, showing the son has complete control over his mind, so why even make all this up? Did you just want to give a tour of the damn place? And to your right is a wall. And to your left is a wall. And to your right is a wall. And to your left is a naked pig. Don't worry, though, that's followed by a boring-ass plane chase as the military sees them as a threat and tries to shoot them down through Storm's tornadoes. Okay, so it's nice to see some bigger effects in these movies even though they do look a little fake, but again, it's X-Men, mutants, monsters, aliens, why are we focusing on a military base they just randomly pass by? They didn't kidnap Xavier, they have no involvement in all this, so who cares? Hey, remember that one issue where they battled the greatest enemy air traffic control? Probably not, because nobody would want to read it, so nobody would want to watch it! Rogue gets sucked out, though, because one of their seat belts are broken! I swear to God, they want every student dead. But Nightcrawler saves her, as they as well get saved by an unlikely comrade. When will these people learn how to fly? Ah, so even he hates what they did to Rogue. My favorite books ever is George Orwell's Animal Farm, but I'll admit, it's hard to read when you're working all the time. Ow! Ah. Ah. Ow! 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 That's why it makes more sense to use Audible. With Audible, you get access to an unbeatable selection of audiobooks, including bestsellers, motivation, mysteries, thrillers, memoirs, and more! You can multitask by listening to them instead of having to carry your book around. 
Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now, with Audible Originals, the selection has gotten even more custom with content made for members. One of my favorite books ever is Animal Farm by George Orwell, but you already know that, and Audible has it, that's cool. Audible members can choose three titles every month, one audiobook and two Audible Originals you can't hear anywhere else. Audible members also get access to exclusive audio fitness programs to start the new year off on the right foot. Listen on any device, anytime, anywhere! At home, at the gym, on your commute, or just on the go, you'll also be able to enjoy easy audiobook exchange, rollover credits, and an audiobook library you keep forever, even if you cancel. One of my favorite books is Animal Farm! Get started with a 30-day trial when you go to audible.com slash nostalgic or text nostalgic to 500-500 and listen for a change. That's audible.com slash nostalgic, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash nostalgic to start your 30-day trial. One of my favorite books is, you know, I don't want to give the wrong impression. This actually is a really good book. You should, you, you should check it out. Go to Audible. It's, it's, it's good. Get Audible and, and, and check this book out. It's a classic. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Audible, the most inspiring minds, the most compelling stories, the best place to listen. Hey everybody, just letting you know we're gonna be at C2E2 in Chicago. That's me, Brad Jones, Rob, Malcolm, Tamara, and a whole bunch of the Channel Awesome gang are gonna be there. We also have a panel, Movies Everybody Disagrees With You On, where you get to talk about the movie that everybody, well, disagrees with you on. It's your panel, it's a lot of fun. We've gotten a booth at this con a ton of times, it's a lot of fun, and we'll see you there. awesome alliance of convenience trope Magneto teams up with the X-Men to stop Stryker after he reveals he's going to use Xavier to destroy all the mutants of the world. We don't know where this space is. One of you might. The professor already tried. Once again, you think it's all about you. Have you seen the posters for this franchise? It is all about him! They read Nightcrawler's mind and discover the lab is where Wolverine went, but it was hidden underground. Funny how his heightened sense of smell didn't pick up the dozens of people that were literally under his nose! Hey. Hey. Oh yeah, I forgot, this was the thing. It's pretty bad in an X-Men movie when you forget Logan wants Jean. Don't make me do this. Do what? This. But we've had whole seconds of chemistry! SECONDS! But if you think that romance isn't well built up, Mystique now, out of nowhere, suddenly has a thing for Logan. You know what I want. This has never been brought up before, and will never be brought up after. It's the Julia Roberts getting big and hook scene. Apparently, the only reason this scene was in the movie was to get an image of its two biggest stars, Hugh Jackman and Halle Berry, in bed together. This is ironic because there's tons of comic material with Wolverine and Storm as a couple, but somehow it was easier to have Mystique spontaneously horny for him. How is it Hugh Jackman had no problem with his character having several beautiful women on top of him? I just realized I answered my own question. Speaking of spontaneous team us, Magneto and Pyro talk for a minute. And that immediately justifies him turning evil by the end. You are a god among insects. Never let anyone tell you different. In a magnifying glass to an ant sort of way. I'm sorry, I can't follow this map unless you use needles. Can you teleport inside? No. I have to be able to see where I'm going. Or in a plane spinning midair out of control. They're both basically the same thing. Magneto doesn't want to take a chance on Wolverine because he doesn't know the technology to open the doors, so he looks towards Mystique. Which is why none of us are surprised when it's revealed that this is Mystique. But honestly, I'll give it a pass because it gave us this gif. How many fans use that on future X-Men movies? She's good. You have no idea. Ew, that's what you meant by you have blue balls. The X-Men search the place to try and find the kids when Wolverine decides, Screw the kids! I just want to know where I came from! Is there, like, a list of worst movie schools ever? He was the babysitter! By the way, is Cyclops still an X-Men? Oh, there he is. God, don't do this! You know, for X-Men United, they sure are separated, dividing, or fighting against each other a lot, aren't they? It looks like he's been brainwashed, too, as he attacks Jean, but she diverts the hit to the dam. So, just a reminder, all the misery that is to follow is completely his fault. Why do so many kid shows have unlikable leaders? Gene, no, 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 it's okay. But luckily, Gene snaps him out of it with... I honestly don't know, a big boom, I guess. Bada boom. As Logan finds the room where Stryker experimented on him, discovering that he was experimented on and Stryker did it. So not a goddamn thing! 
Oh, wait, we do find out that animanium has to be hot. That should tide us over until our inevitable disappointment. Striker 6's bodyguard named Death Strike on him. Now in the comic, they had this huge rivalry. You already know they don't care. As is par with these movies, Wolverine always gets the funniest swear. Holy shit. At some point they'll put together that the more they have him swear, the better the movie will get. We get a pretty decent fight between them, and even a pretty cool death scene. But it looks like Walmart Cerebro has located all the mutants for Xavier, and his brainwashed mind tries to kill them all. But Magneto stops him, plays wall Tetris, and... In my always favorite scene when bad guys team up with good guys, the bad guys inevitably turn into dickheads again. Striker tries to escape, but Wolverine stops him before he takes off. Who am I? If you really knew about your past... The work we did together. What we did to Blob, Gambit, and Deadpool, it's too awful to conceive! He makes sure Stryker doesn't leave as the X-Men save the kids, but have to get inside to stop Xavier from killing mankind. Kurt, I need you to take me inside. But if I can't see where I'm going... I have faith in you. I mean, you totally caught a person mid-air without seeing where she was. There was no window facing her, and yet you got her on the first try. Looks like you were facing away from the plane when you teleported back, so I really don't see how this is a big deal. Oh, he made it, thank God, so suspenseful. It looks like Storm needs to free Stryker's son in order to break the illusion. It's about to get very cold in here. I'm not going anywhere. Why? Can't he just warp out and then warp back in when she's done? And why can't she just keep Nightcrawler warm the same way she's clearly keeping herself warm? Maybe she saw Viva Rock Vegas and wanted to punish him. It seems to work as they save the professor. We get the closest thing we'll ever see to Rogue flying, and Magneto again runs into Stryker who has plans for him. He moves him over there! Kind of the equivalent of duct taping someone to a wall doesn't seem that bad. Pyro ends up joining Magneto. It was a very convincing two-minute talk. But the dam is about to break apart, resulting in... Let's just be honest, the most nonsensical of escape plans. Ugh, here we go. Jean walks out of the plane, lifts the plane in the air, pulls a Moses, and then sacrifices herself to the water. I know what I'm doing. This is the only way. Really? That was the only way? Iceman couldn't have frozen the water. This is the only way. Storm couldn't have stopped the water. This is the only way. Xavier couldn't have lifted the plane from inside. This is the only way. She couldn't have lifted the plane from inside. This is the only way. You just really want to Wrath of Khan this because you're such a Star Trek bitch that you even took a small part pushing buttons in one of the most hated of Star Trek movies, didn't you? This is an edited version of Brian Singer saying yes. I know it! Jeep, listen to me. Do this. We barely had something together. Goodbye. She lets the water finally engulf her as the X-Men put together that Jean is <clears throat> dead. She's gone. Don't! You don't say that! Uh, oh, I'll miss how we knew nothing about her outside of how poorly she teased the next movie. The president is about to make an address about harsher laws on mutants when Xavier freezes the production to let him know that not all mutants are threatening. While threatening the ever-living shit out of him! Then you also know I don't respond well to threats. Mr. President, this is not a threat. This is an opportunity. That terrifying lightning is totally to put your mind at ease. There are forces in this world who believe that a war is coming. Some have already tried to start one, and there have been casualties. Casualties we barely knew. The next move is yours. We'll be watching. Again, not a threat. Totally not a threat. We are so watching. So America completely ignores that four minutes of dead air, and the president decides not to push for harsher laws on mutants. Well, first of all, I really doubt that would fly, but let's, for the sake of argument, say that is what happened in America. The entire world was attacked! Even if the US backed down, every other country would be World War III-ing the hell out of this shit! But, for the sake of... I don't know, just ending this almost two and a half hour movie, the plan works, and Wolverine lets Cyclops know Jean loved him most. She didn't make a choice. It was you. Wait a minute. Did she have a thing for you, Wolverine? <gasps> oh yeah, you didn't know about that, um... Look, Omega Red! What? He's not even a character yet. Damn it! 
And in case you had any doubt this movie was a total Star Trek II ripoff, here's the opening narration read by the person who just died, building up that they're gonna be back in the next film with almost the exact same music. Space, the final frontier. Mutation, it is the key to our evolution. Where no man has gone before. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. Expectations right now! So that was X2, what's hailed by many to be one of the best, if not the best, X Men movie. How impressive is that again? Honestly, the film is super long, needlessly slow, has a ton of pointless moments, even more plot holes than the first one, and way too many characters to give them enough time to be interesting. With that said though, there is an occasional moment of coolness, a nice action sequence here and there, and mostly a fair amount of good acting to make me care just enough. It's definitely on the lower level of okay, but it is still okay. Nothing special, but nothing that bad either. It's a mostly boring, mostly inconsistent, but mostly harmless comic book adaptation. And hey, seeing how much this film is building up the next one, it has to pay off, right? I'M THE JUGGERNAUT, BITCH! Hey, Doug Walker here, not only doing the charity shout-out, but also showing you a short film. It is called Pip. It is about a guide dog, and it ties into the charity, the Southeastern Guide Dogs. Uh, this is a wonderful charity. Its address is guide dogs, with an S, dot org. Different from another one I did, which was guide dog. Uh, dot org. Uh, both of them are wonderful charities, uh, but this short film is really friggin adorable. It's really sweet. It, it's got tons and tons of hits and you can see why. It, it's super, super cute. You're gonna want to donate to this wonderful cause after seeing this short film. So uh, the link I'm putting in there is the one that links to the short film that also has a donate button on there. So uh, you can check that out. But if you want to go to the original site, you can go to Guide Dogs uh, with an S dot org because Guide Dog will also take you to a great charity, but uh, uh, we're, we're focusing on this one today. So uh, go check out the short film, donate, just give it as much attention as possible because these are people that do really great things and they put together a really great short. So that's about it. Go check it out and enjoy. Take care.